Hi guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which means it's time for us to have a little quick get-together. Hopefully it'll be kind of quick, or it won't. I don't know. We never know what's going to go down. We're going to just make sure that I am transmittalating. It looks like I am, and I'm starting to see some eyeballs pop up, which means some folks are on. Hey, Karen, how are you tonight? I appreciate you joining. All right, so... My card today is for this week's paper players. You may start to see a trend. Hi, Mary. Hi, Diane. Um, Saturday night videos will be the card I'm going to do for the paper players design team card on Sunday. Hi, Donna. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate that. Um, hi, Pam. Hi, Pam Simmons. So we got Pam Zorn, Pam Simmons. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Donna. Hi, Vicki. Appreciate you joining me. Um, so the theme was back to school, clean and simple back to school. So those are two kind of bugaboos for me. You know, I'm, I'm all about the clean and simple. So that was pretty easy. Uh, said me never. Hi, Linda. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Terry. Hello, everybody. If I miss saying hello, just know I'm thinking hello in my heart. Okay. Um, so anyway, I thought I would give it a go. Um, oh, the back to school piece. I don't have kids, so nobody's going back to school. Um, but I thought, what the heck, I, I can do that, I can do that. So I decided to put a couple of stamp sets together. Oh, this one, because it was really the only stamp set I have that has anything related to school. So my back to school card is for a teacher, not for a student. You can tell because it says, you know, teacher on the inside. But it's for back to school, and I think it could actually be for, you know, whether your kids are coming back to school and you're teaching them online or you're teaching them in the classroom Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, however it is. It's odd days around, that is for certain sure. Um, so I used Harvest Hellos and I turned the image into an apple using the Apple Builder Punch. And I used Zany Zebras because it's just too cute and I thought I would do the A to Z theme. So A is for apples, Z is for zebra. My zebra is um, Calypso Coral and Bumblebee because I'm also playing along with the Global Design Project Color Challenge, which is Granny Apple Green, Bumblebee, and Calypso Coral. So kind of non-traditional back-to-school colors, but it's my card and I'm not really sending it to any teachers that I know because I don't know any teachers. So I can make it whatever color I want. Um, on the inside, I stamped the uh, apple image again in Granny Apple Green and added the sentiment in Calypso Coral. And then of course I decorated the front. This sentiment's kind of tongue in cheek. I'm not actually sure how many uh, teachers are celebrating going back, to the kids going back to school right now. So um, take it for what it's worth. If you don't think your teacher is celebrating, maybe don't put that on there. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. And all of this will be on my blog tomorrow, so you do not need to worry about measurements. Although I've been a little bit, I haven't been good about it, I guess. Okay, so I've got some cards already done, and I've done a little uh, cutting ahead of time. Oh, I was going to tell you, I did use the really cool stitched triangle dies to make my panels. Um, I love that. If you guys like stitched shapes, sti stitched rectangles, uh, nested labels, you're really going to like the stitched triangle die, even if you didn't get the right triangle stamp set and the triangle stamp set that's in the Christmas catalog. Although, I, I think having all of them is, is a worthwhile thing to do. Yeah, Mary, I'm sure that people are definitely... Um, oh, gosh, Daryl, you know you're right. <laughs> I for, kind of forgot you're, you were a teacher. And I know you, I'm guessing you're probably not celebrating. My bad, dude. I'm sending you this. I'm putting it in the mail. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I have some um, Artistry Blooms car uh, DSP, and I'm just going to adhere that to a bumblebee mat for the card front. And I'm going to use liquid glue. And then we're going to make our triangles, which I've already cut for you, because, I mean, really. We're going to do a little embossing real time. Hey, Belinda. Hi, Sue. Appreciate you. All right. And now, here are my two triangles. You can see how they're going to go. Basically, just like that. And before I go too far, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp the zebra onto this panel right here. 
and then I'm going to emboss both panels in the Tasteful Textile embossing folder. Okay, so let's do that. Here is our zebra, and we're gonna do him in Calypso Coral because why wouldn't you have a Calypso Coral and Bumblebee zebra? And I think, let's not be silly, Mary. Let's just go ahead and get that out the way so you don't make a mistake. All right, hey, Michelle. Hey, Chris, appreciate you joining. All right, so we're just going to put him right here in the corner, like so. We'll hold him for just a second. And then I'm going to take the grass from the set. That's grass. You can tell because, you know, it's grass. I suppose it could also be zebra stripe, but in my world, it's grass. And so I'm just going to kind of stamp this a across the bottom like so to give him a little ground and then before we get too much further I will I'm gonna just color him color his little mane now this guy you're not gonna see his body because I'm going to fussy cut another version of this and that should do just fine. Okay, so now I'm going to emboss this in the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder. And we'll pull this out. All right, so I'm going to put both pieces in at once with the embossing side, which has the Stampin' Up! logo on it, up. And then I'm gonna make my sandwich, which is just the platform and the 3D embossing plate, which is number four. So that's all we're gonna need. And we're gonna just run it through like that. Just so you know, in case you're wondering, yes, I am still loving my new cutter. Oh, thank you, Vicki, appreciate that. I kinda like my dog too. He's pretty cute. In fact, when I end up taking a drink, I'll be taking a drink from the bottle that he carried around the road today. He's such a good little helper. All right, so there we have it. Just another little texture. It's really, really all we're looking for is a little bit of texture. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp Mr. Zebra Adan in Calypso Coral. I know, the expressions on the uh, zebra are really, really cute. I wasn't sure I wanted this stamp, but I, I ended up thinking it would be fun, and so now, of course, since I needed the A is for Apple, Z is for Zebra card, I was going to put M is for Mask, but that seemed rude, rude, really rude. Okay, now I'm going to cut him out, and he's going to get really funny really quick, okay? So it, this really kind of cracked me up when I first did it. So I'm just doing a what I would call a hard fussy cut, which means right on the right on the on the line which actually for me is an easier fussy cut I have a much harder time when I'm trying to simulate a die cut you know where you leave a little gap around the edges I have a hard time making my gaps stay the same all around when I'm aiming for the line I do much a more better much a more better all right and I'm cutting off his mane and his forelock there you go a little horse terminology for you and we'll get his little, keep his ear on. We want his ear on. Now wait until you see him. He's so funny without his mane. He was really kind of reminding me of a brand new marine recruit coming right out of Camp Lejeune after his trip to the barber shop. Which, you know, if you've ever done that, I haven't. But I'm pretty certain it's a significant emotional <laughs> event. Uh, you know, when I was traveling for business... I used to come home, you know, Atlanta is kind of a hub for bringing in the kids to go down to Lejeune and, oh, probably over to Polk and whatnot um, for basic training. And I would see those little kids all sitting against the wall or being braced up against the wall in their first exposure to their training instructor. And I thought, oh, you guys are in for it now. Life as you know it has just changed forever. And I gotta tell you, I'm cutting all of it. I cut his butt off too. Not his butt, just his tail. Trust me, it'll be fine, Amy. Don't be a rabble rouser. 
I was telling a touching story, okay? Everybody was starting to tear up a little bit. No, not really. All I could think of was how young they looked. And, and the more I traveled, the younger they got. I don't know how that is. <laughs> it might be that my perspective was changing, but good Lord, as we got towards the end, I, I swear to God, they're recruiting 17-year-olds. Wait, maybe they are recruiting. So I don't know. No, I think you got to still be 18. But it was, I was like, oh my goodness. Do you know what you have done? But I always told them, I always said, if they would look at me, if they weren't too scared to look at me, I'd always say, thank you for your service, because they were fixing to do it. No matter how far they got, they had taken that step, you know, and been brave and, and taken that step. Okay, look, how funny does he look? <laughs> he cracks me up with no, no mane and no tail. It's like, oh, poor little zebra. We're going to give that all back to him in just a second. Don't worry. We're going to give it all back in just a second. Right after I cut this badly. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is take my Calypso Coral Marker, not the brush tip. 12-year-olds, I know. Really? 17? Do you think, uh, did he have to get his parents to sign something? I mean, is that even... You can tell, you can tell I'm one of those spoiled officer types. I didn't do any of that. I went through ROTC and went to college and all that other stuff. So I don't quite understand the whole recruiting thing, to be quite honest, how it works. Um, the only part of the whole recruiting thing that I do understand for certain is regardless of what your recruiter tells you, it's going to be the needs of whichever service you have joined is going to tell you what, what, uh, job specialty you get. He'll tell you you're going to be a pilot, but if what they need at the time is logisticians, guess what? <laughs> you're going to be a loggy. Just throwing that out there. Okay, so all I'm doing now is just kind of making sure that my um, outline is extended right where I've cut. Got to give him his buzz cut back. He needs his little bald noggin. Okay, and then I'll take my bumblebee again and color his little stripes because he's a he's a multicolored zebra. You know, this is one of those rare non-African zebras. He's from he's from Colorado, and he is a bumblebee and calypso coral zebra. It's a thing. I think they're out there in Colorado, out on the plains. Rarely sighted, kind of like the Loch Ness Monster, but they're probably there. Okay. And so I'm just kind of giving him a little... I'm Actually, what I'm really doing is kind of toning down the Calypso Coral. Okay? So I just kind of wanted it toned a little bit. And adding the bumblebee did that for me. Okay. Now I'm also going to color his eyeball just a little bit and his eyebrow his eyeball and his eyebrow okay and then you can see what is going to happen here once I get everything put together I'm going to pop him onto the top of this and we'll be ready to go okay so these are now ready to adhere to my card front and let me show you a little trick I'm going to line the corner of my cardstock mat with my grid paper, okay? And I want these to be equal distance. So I want the top one to be the same distance from the top and the side as the bottom one is from the bottom and the side. Did that make any sense at all? So what I started with is I put this corner where these two lines intersected in my brain, okay? So I lined this uh, the left side up with this line going down and the top with this line going across. Okay, like so. And now I'm going to adhere that with some liquid glue. <laughs> Nurses didn't need to know how to march. Uh, so when I taught at Squadron Officer School, they, at some point in the middle of my tour there, they moved Officer Candidate School uh, from Lackland up to Montgomery because they well they wanted to co-locate all the education and 
we got to see the Mimzo folks. Mimzo is the, I can't even, medical, military medical. Basically, it's the, okay, yesterday you were a doctor, now you're a military doctor. This is how you salute. This is sort of how you march. This is how you kind of run. It was the Air Force, so, you know, not a lot of running, really. Um, but it was interesting to watch those guys because they, you know, doctors, maybe you've noticed, doctors have some... They have some ways of doing business, and, and they were often in conflict, I think, with how the military wanted them to do business. So that was a couple of weeks for them, I'm sure. Uh, hey, Linda. Appreciate you. Memories of Top Gun. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a long time ago, Top Gun. Okay, so I'm doing the same. I'm lining the bottom of this triangle up with this line extended across and the left right side with this line going up. So in theory, I should be pretty much the same top to bottom and pretty straight. You know, as straight as anything I ever do, okay? Because <laughs> yeah, my straightness level is, is suspect most of the time. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a piece of bumblebee ribbon and I'm going to lay it across there and secure it in the back with some glue dots. So let's cut that. We had three unit arcs and all met in the military and ended up working together later. They didn't always conform to hospital rules. I'm certain they did not. <laughs> okay, so I am going to take a little piece of stamp and seal plus and run it right here, right here, just to kind of give me a foundation for my ribbon, my ribbon. All right, like a sew. And then I'm going to use glue dots. Now, when you are putting ribbon on at an angle, you're going to fold it across, and on the back it's going to angle. Otherwise, if you try to go straight across it, that is not going to work, I assure you. So I'm, going to, I'm a little too long, so I'm just going to cut that off a little bit. Cut that off a little bit. And then wrap it around snug like so, and see where that ribbon wants to go on the back, and put my glue dot there. Let the ribbon tell you what it wants. The ribbon will tell you what it wants. Be one with the ribbon. Be the ribbon. All right, so I've got a little too long here too. We'll cut that off, and then turn it over and fold it with my finger because I did not get a glue dot before I put it on there. Okay. Whoops. And I still did not get a glue dot. I got a little, a little quick with my glue dot getting. Okay, there we go. That one got a glue dot. Okay, there we have it. And then we just kind of, you know, wiggle it a little bit to straighten it out. Okay. Now we can um, do, I, okay, so before you came, this is what I did. I took a piece of, look at this little mess I've made here. I took a piece of foam, uh, foam sheet, foam adhesive sheet, and I stuck a little piece of bumblebee on and a little piece of granny apple green, and I cut them A and Z with the playful alphabet right here, like this, which is a most wonderful, I love this alphabet die. Alphabet dies can be kind of persnickety, but this one is not too big and not too little, not too fat, not too thin. It is, as Goldilocks would say, just right. So playful alphabet, get it. I promise you're gonna love it. Okay, so then I cut the A and the Z with the foam adhesive. Let's put these away before I do something goofy like, you know, lose them. What I love about this too is they've given you doubles of some of the more common dyes like A, E, L, I, uh, T, S, R, O. So you can make multiple letters to make your words much more easily. Okay, and then we'll punch out the Z and set that aside. Okay, so we've got A and we've got Z. A is for apple, Z is for zebra. And I cut, I stamped an apple from Harvest Hello's 
in tuxedo black on a piece of um, wouldn't tape be easier for the ribbon um, it might but sometimes tape kind of <clears throat> can go away it can lose its adherence and the glue dots are pretty good and I'm I'm a fan of glue dots okay so I stamped the apple in tuxedo black on some artistry blooms in granny apple green and I also stamped the leaf in tuxedo black on granny apple green cardstock and then I am hoping for forgiveness for the color challenge because I needed a little early espresso stem I needed a stem so let's put our apple together hi Debbie Debbie you didn't miss me Debbie Highlands and I'm gonna adhere this stem to the front of my apple and then I will put the leaf on over the top like so okay and then before we get too much further I'm gonna go ahead and put my zebra on because I want to see him on I want to see him on come on get out of there little hanging chat okay uh, let's see get some dimensionales dimensionales and put it on this little dude right here these are very handy to have this is where having um, cut in half ones is quite handy because it's a little bit more more better but you're still probably going to want to cut one in half again. Hey, Lois. Neutrals are allowed. Good. Because I had to have the neutral. I just couldn't see a calypso coral stem. That didn't even make sense to me. Okay, so I'm cutting it in half and hoping that that will be small enough. And it is not as small as I want it. So I'm going to cut it again. Which, if you're doing the math along with me... Daryl, my teacher, that means we have a quarter of a dimensional now, two of them. This is why you need to take math in school and learn because so you'll know how many dimensionals you're using on the back of your zebra. These are important things. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm going to take off his little doohickeys here. That's uh, code for stamping dimensional covers. Yes, I know. Yes, 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 I know. Always handy. Rub it in. Just keep rubbing it in. How many years are you going to say, I told you so? Okay, now this is fun. He's going to go from little recruit at Camp Lejeune to his first weekend at Liberty. Ah, he can let his hair down if you get what I'm saying. Except you want to line up his little image. Trust me. There you go. He wants to be over that stamped image. There, just like that. Isn't that so fun? And then we're going to put our apple up here at kind of a jaunty angle. And we'll add a, because that's for apple, and Z, which has dimensional covers all over it, for zebra okay so let's go ahead and just peel the back off i do love this foam adhesive tape i do okay and then the z here we go oops oops oopsie thank you karen yes daryl oops you know i think that was an upside down z let's put the z the right way up Let's put the Z the right way up. Okay. Now I'm going to take my bow easy before we get going with the sentiment and make a quick a bow. And I think I wanted this size. Let me see what size I used. Yes. And I'm going to make this from the same bumblebee ribbon. The ribbon. Ribbon. I don't know why I just did that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say rebone, rebone, rebone three times like that. All right. And then... Trick with the bow easy is you make sure that you just keep doing everything going the same direction. So when you make that loop, you need to take the, te the loose end back through the loop in the same direction. 
And the second trick is the side that you're working on is actually the back side of the bow. So this is the front side of the bow and that's what you want to look pretty. Okay, so there we go. Now we're ready for that. And now I, I have already cut. It could go to an Amazon employee. That's very true. <laughs> All right, so I've cut a rectangle, a stitched rectangle die. And this is the small, long, narrow one. And I'm going to stamp my um, welcome back sentiment from Harvest Hello in Calypso Coral on that. And I'm going to pull it to me so I can see it. But what I want you to notice is I'm hedging it a little bit to the right so that I don't totally cover it up with my bow that I want right there, okay? So I'm just hedging it a little bit to the right, like so. And I'm holding it a beat. Everybody, take a deep breath, cross your fingers. Whew. Okay, we got a good image, yay, yay. All right, now I'm going to pop my sentiment on with dimensionals. And you'll notice I'm doing that before I put the apple on because it's going to kind of, it's going to kind of drive where the apple goes. All right. And we're putting our dimensionals on. And I think I'll put one more because, you know, one, if, if four, if three are good, four is obviously a better number. Now here's the other advantage of putting the stamp and seal here. It gives me a, a solid place to adhere <clears throat> my sentiment. Okay. And I'm going to use this because my fingers just are so goofy. So we're gonna put him right there. And then I'm gonna use a glue dot to put my bow on like so. And I'm going to turn it just the tiniest bit. Now, a few more dimensionals for my apple. My apple. Oh, we had... <laughs> I bought, like, I don't even know. I love apple, Envy apples. Do you guys know Envy apples? I really like them better than... Um, Honey crisp. I bought so many of those today. It was crazy. I'm not. I'm embarrassed to tell you how many dollars of my grocery bill were apples, but that's healthy, right? That's good for me, right? Hey, right, Kathy. Thank you so much. For oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think I think anybody would like this card. It's just too stinking cute. I, she says so modestly. I can't believe I just said that. I'm sorry. How rude of me. Okay, so I'm just going to tilt, tip this a little bit and get it stuck on there. Like so. And then we will cut our bow tails. And I'm going to put a single, not a yellow, you know what I just did? I tied a yellow ribbon round an old card front. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself. Yeah, okay. So I'm using a 2021, 2020, 2021 in color enamel dot in Bumblebee and sticking it right there. And you have to do like that. Okay, so now let's set that aside. And on the inside, what I'm going to do is stamp this apple in granny apple green. Interestingly, I make my apples in granny apple green, but I don't actually like granny apples. Granny, granny apples. Is that the name of them? Granny Smith. Granny Smith apples. I don't like them. They're too tart. I don't like them at all. Okay. Yes, Mary Cowboy Rhapsody, right? Uh, no, Rustler's Rhapsody. Very funny. I'm about 45 minutes into it from my last... Um, uh, treadmill go. All right, I'm going to clean off my leaf, my lif. Cleaning off my lif, and I'm going to move that for just a minute. 
and I've just stamped it, inked it in Granny Apple Green. I'll put the uh, apple back on. The way I'm carrying on about these blocks, you would think I only had two, when in fact I have many. But I just am so lazy. Okay, and then an early espresso stem. Aww. Peanut butter. Yeah, I like apples with peanut butter too. And Granny Smith's with peanut butter is good. Okay, so I'm pretty certain that apple stems are narrow side down. I, I just made that up, but that's what I'm pretty certain. Okay. And then, then, we're going to put our sentiment in with Calypso Coral. And I always do like to stamp my scrap paper just to be sure that I'm straight and I'm happy with that. Make my card straight. Had to stop talking there for a minute so I would get there, right? Okay, perfect. I'll take it. I'll take it for a dollar. And then we're going to use some liquid glue and adhere that. Mmm. Mmm. You guys need to try Envy Apples, I'm just telling you. I had them for the first time when I was up in um, Baltimore, mm, I guess two years ago for my last trip. And I discovered Envy Apples, and I was done for. I love them. They're my favorite. And I would tell you they're my pony's favorite, but that would be a total lie because they like all apples all the time. They don't care which flavor I get. They just want me to bring apples. Actually, technically apple cores. So we save all the apple cores and take them out to the ponies. All right, and there, this is a Granny Apple Green card base. And then we'll pop our card front on with more dimensionals. If some dimensionals are good, lots of dimensionals are better. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay, got to cut some dimensionals. Oh, oh no, oh no. Did I give you guys the earworm? I'm sorry, I gave myself an earworm. I'm gonna be singing Thai Yellow Ribbon around the old oak tree all night. Goodness gracious. Did y'all see we did our contratemps in, uh, at Stone Mountain make the national news tonight? I don't know, maybe it didn't, it was a big deal here. They cut into TV sometime in the middle of the day around one quite the mess. Nobody wanted to defund the police then. They all wanted to know where they'd been. Okay, so just popping this on and I'm going to twist my little bow and make sure that he's not covering that little zebra. It's kind of an interactive card. I like it. Okay, now all we have left to do is decorate our um, envelope and look for our bowie zebra thing. Hmm. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Anybody, yeah, watching national news is a hoot. It's a hoot and a holler. All right, so we're just going to repeat the apple on the front, making sure I'm putting it in the bottom right-hand corner, not the top right-hand corner. Not saying I've ever done that, but I have totally done that. Totally done that. Where in the world did my leaf go? There's my leaf. There's my leaf. Come here, leaf. Come here, leaf. Okay. I'm not going to even say a word, but I'm getting really lucky with those leaves and the stems lining up. <laughs> All right. And then somewhere around here is my stem. Here we go. And early espresso. And that is it. So I'm going to put away my ink right quick so that I don't, you know, get it everywhere. And we'll put a little bit more of the artistry blooms on the envelope flap. And we'll be done. trim that off. 
Now look, you can see that my little piece of DSP that was left wasn't quite big enough to spare knot. We're just going to trim that straight across like so. There's still plenty of stickum space left to hold your flap down and nobody will ever know the difference. Nobody will ever know the difference. Got a little glue right there. And there you go. Back to school. A is for apple, Z is for zebra, with the wonderful Harvest Hellos, which is a returning set, and the Zany Zebras, which is new. Also, did you know that Zany Zebras is in our beginner's brochure, and they've got a really fun little conglomeration of goodies that you can buy all together to make all of the cards that you see in there. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I appreciate you spending part of your weekend with me. Hope the rest of your weekend is awesome. Thank you so much. Bye.